Welcome to the first episode of the inventory system tutorial series and by the end of this video we're going to be able to pick up some items and we are going to be able to print uh, their names out. So what I have here is a default third person template with three folders, one contains some static meshes and icons for the items and two empty folders. So in my inventory folder I'm going to right click, create a new blueprint structure, call this S inventory and this is going to contain every single variable that we need in our items. So the first one probably will be a name, since every item needs a name. Uh, this is going to be a string actually, not a name. And then we could use a description perhaps. Um, let's add a icon, so it's going to be a 2D texture. Texture 2D, and then we might use a mesh which is going to be a static mesh. There we go. And we can use, let's say, can stack. And this is going to be a Boolean so that we would know if we can stack an item. So by default, what I want to do is actually select some uh, icon, just in case if I don't have an icon, so I can leave it uh, to have some default one. And for the mesh, I'm going to add a cube um, so that they have some default meshes. Now, with this being done, let's close this up and now let's create the item database. So let's select the miscellaneous data table and this now requires us to have a structure and we have it right here. So let's select our S inventory. Uh, it makes two of these for some strange reason, but they both have the same location. So they both are the same. Let's select it, item, database, and there we have in database. So how do you add an entry is by clicking this big plus sign right here. And every time we're going to uh, request information about one of our items from the database, we're going to look for the row name and then it's going to return all of these variables that we made in the structure. So we can rename this by double clicking here and let's type in perhaps empty because I want to have an empty item and then I'm going to give this a name which is going to be empty. So to perhaps make life easier for yourself, you can recreate this thing in uh, Excel in the uh, CSV file. And then once you want to import it from the uh, CSV, you can re-import item database, select the, uh, yeah, the CSV file and it adds entries. So what I have here is log and plank. Uh, which are going to be stackable and also I have a pallet and a crate which are not going to be stackable and of course an empty item. So now that I have a few items in here I'm going to add some more later on. Let's create another blueprint structure and this is going to contain our inventory and this is going to be as slots for me and this is going to have two variables the first one is going to be the item and the other one is going to be the amount for the amount let's use an integer and for the item what we need is a data table row handle and this basically contains two things the item database uh, uh, yeah data table in my case item database so i'm going to select this by default to be here in basically everywhere and just in case if you're wondering it doesn't matter you can select any of these if you like it's just simply going to be uh, by default everywhere it's going to be a log so just in case I'm actually going to select an empty one. So once we have this sorted out then let's create a pickup by selecting blueprint class. Let's look for static mesh actor and this is going to be the pickup master in my case. And here we need a variable. This is going to be an item which needs to be the s slots structure type item. And let's make sure that this item is instance editable and exposed on spawn. So if we spawn this uh, pickup, we can actually uh, input some values in it. Now, the next thing, let's, uh, let's set up some things in here because we don't have a static mesh here. So uh, let's, let's go to the construction script. Let's drag in our item. Let's break this thing. It's going to return us two values the item and the amount. If we would break the item now, we get two more values. And so we get the data table and the row name. From the data table, let's get the data table row and connect the name. And now it's going to look for a row name in the data table. Now, this is going to return us a wildcard uh, because it doesn't really know which uh, structure it needs to return. Um, there are two ways we can cheat this. We could create the S inventory structure uh, variable or so what we could do is copy this node right here and now we can input a data table. And now this returns the 
correct structure. So we can break this and delete this node and connect it right here. Now what I want to do over here is drag in the static mesh component and I want to set a static mesh since I have one in this uh, structure. So let's connect the mesh to the new mesh and now if we go to the view of port you can see I have a cube since by default uh, this is going to be an empty item. But if I would select a log it gives me a log a palette and all the other stuff. Now one issue that we're gonna have is if we select this it doesn't have any physics and we cannot check this. But what we uh, should do in order to make this happen is select any mesh we like. It doesn't really matter since we set one in the construction script. So random uh, static mesh and simulate physics now is working. So now let's make sure we can actually pick something up in this video. Let's go to our third person character so I'm going to create a new variable, call this player slot and this needs to be the S slot structure type and this needs to be an RI. Now let's create a possibility for us to uh, add an item. So let's create a new function, let's call add item and let's make this super simple for now. Uh, so new parameter item in the input which is the S slot item. Um, that's going to be the item that we're going to pass along because it contains the item and the amount. And here what we want to do is simply drag in our player slots then and add, uh, yeah, just add. So this is going to add a new entry to the RI. And for now, this is going to be super simple. And of course, we're going to we're going to work on this to make it more complex. Now, in my event graph, uh, I will do keyboard E key event because on E key, I want to do a line trace by channel in order to pick up my items. Line trace by channel. So 50 times later, there we go, line trace by channel. For the start point, I'm going to drag in the follow camera. Let's um, get forward vector and let's get the world location for the camera. So what I want to do is multiply the forward vector times integer. And then I want to do world location plus the other vector right here. So if we would type in let's say times 300 that means that the line trace is going to begin 300 units in front of the camera and if we copy this reconnect it the same way like so and like so and connect this to the endpoint and instead of 300 let's make this into a thousand this is going to do uh, us a line from 300 units in front of the camera up until 1000 so now from this return value, let's do a if branch check to see if we hit something. Let's break the hit result to get the data. And now let's see. So we want to pick up an item. So doo -doo 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 -doo. probably what should we do is check if this item um, is the one that we are looking for. Since I don't want to interact with random things in the world, what I will do is go to the pickup master, select the self. Let's add a tag to this, look for a tag, add element, and let's give this, so it's going to be a pickup for me. Uh, make sure you add the tag to the self and not the component because those are two different uh, tags. Then uh, let's go to the third person character, hit actor, has tag, and the tag needs to be what we just typed, so it is a pickup. So we're going to check if this is true if the thing we hit is the pickup. Now from here what we can do is do a cast to uh, what was the name? Okay, the pickup master of course. Yes. The object is the same hit actor and then from over here we could get the item and then we could do our add item function to add an item to our inventory. And then once this is done as this uh, pickup master we can do destroy actor. Now if you are more advanced you already know that this is not the greatest thing uh, but we're gonna work on this uh, in the following video but for now this is what we have. So now if we would go to the game let's drag in a pickup master and let's change so if we scroll down select the item item we can change this to be a log and any other item we want. So now press play, walk up to it, press E, boom, 
items are disappearing one by one since we are picking those up but we don't know if they are actually in our inventory so for now let's create a small cheat let's do keyboard one key event and on keyboard one I'm gonna drag the player slots do a loop for each and each of those things let's break the RI element break the item and here what I want to simply do is do a print and I want to print out only the row names uh, yeah all of the row names to know what items do I have so now if we press play pick up an item click one you can see we have an empty item since we did pick up an empty item let's select both of these uh, whoops so one and we have log pallet and an empty item so the base uh, base is working pretty nicely and yeah in the next video we're gonna actually display these things on our screen and perhaps create some more uh, necessary widgets for the future episodes so thank you guys for watching stay tuned leave a like leave a comment subscribe and see you guys in the next video